We first met Sue Putt on Lake Pima Tuning in August 2012 at the Penn, Ohio Newfoundland Club water test in Jamestown, Pennsylvania. In 2012, our family was still new enough to water work that I didn't know what I didn't know on the subject. Still, Sue stood out for me and did so quickly. Sue Putt knew what she wanted to communicate to Henry, her Landseer Newfoundland, and she did so in gentle but clear and concise ways. By contrast to some other exhibitors, Sue had a real economy of speech. Inspired by Sue and other Great Lakes members we'd met, it was natural that we attend the GLNC test the following year. As it had been for so many years, the Great Lakes test was held in Gowan, Michigan at Camp Concordia. Camp Concordia was opened in 1957 by a division of the Lutheran Church. Concordia was bucolic and quiet, but it was also clear that there was great tradition and affection for the past among the club members there. Great Lakes had, in fact, hosted the earliest water test for the Newfoundland breed. Again, as she had a year earlier, Sue Putt stood out for me as a deeply enlightened trainer and handler, both by what she did and by what she didn't do in handling her dogs. In 2020, Great Lakes moved the club's water test to Portage, Michigan, the town where, by coincidence, Sue Putt had worked in quality control for Upjohn, the company that would later and famously become Pfizer. When we attended the 2021 water test at Ramona Park, Sue exhibited Spencer, son to the late Henry, and WRDX. Sue had also just gotten her precious puppy Howard, the great-great-grandson of Henry's, and then just 18 weeks old. Sue was gracious, as was typical, in agreeing to my interview that you will watch here. We talked alongside the water test events at Ramona Park. We covered topics practical and philosophical, and matters of love and loss surrounding life with the Newfoundland. It's now 2023, more than a decade after I first met Sue Putt. At this point, I've assisted my wife, Deanna, a very lot, and Deanna now excels considerably in water work. I'm tempted to say that I now know much more about what I'm looking at than I did in 2012 when I first observed Sue. But Sue remains as impressive and inspiring to me as ever. Sue is conspicuous among even very skilled handlers as she delivers her very clear and concise message to the dog and she does so in a kind and generous way. For, for those who don't know you in the Newfoundland community, and that wouldn't be many people, with whom are we visiting today? I'm Sue Putt. And where are you from, Sue? We live in Paw, Paw Michigan. Huh? My husband and I and our four Newfies. And when you use the term Newfie, you mean? Newfoundland dogs. Newfoundland dog. And where were you born? I was born in South Milwaukee. And when did you become interested in dogs? My whole life. Did you grow up with dogs in the home? No but I would pick up every stray that I found and bring them home and say, please, can we keep them? Can we keep them? Were your parents in disapproval of having a dog? My mother was a neat freak and the house had to be perfect. And a dog just didn't fit into that. We eventually got one when we were older. I always liked the big dogs. Those would be the dogs I would bring home would be the big dogs. And the dog that they got was a little beagle mutt mix. I wasn't really close to her a whole lot. She was very food motivated, but she was a good family pet. But the smallness of the beagle was sort of a compromise for your mother's need for order and neatness? I think it was a compromise between all of us kids begging for a dog and my dad talking to her. And it was the neighbor's dog that had puppies. So it was just very convenient to get a puppy from one of the neighbors. This was back in the 60s, so the view of dogs was a lot different back then than they are now. But that was 
that was how we ended up with our first family dog. When did you first become interested in large dogs? Those I liked my whole life, the, the large dogs. When I was 13, I was at a friend's house and she had a St. Bernard. And so we were playing with her dog and her dog lunged at me and tore my nose from here to here. I had to go to the hospital and have plastic surgery. When I moved out of the home, the first dog I wanted was a St. Bernard puppy because I didn't want to be afraid of big dogs. And who can be afraid of a puppy? So that kind of helped me get over that a little bit. And that was my first large dog that I owned was a St. Bernard. That was a bold way for getting back on the horse for a young person that had just needed surgery to, uh, to deal with injuries. I didn't want to be afraid of them. And um, to this day, I can't move. I can't watch the movie Cujo because it just brings it all back. When did you become aware of the Newfoundland? While I had St. Bernard's, I had a St. Bernard book that talked about the history of them. And I read that at one time they were in danger of being, you know, wiped out. And they bred them to a large black dog that happened to be a Newfoundland. That was the first time I've ever heard of a Newfie, and that really intrigued me. And then I met a Newfoundland, and I really liked the temperament. It was very laid back, very friendly. And that was kind of my introduction to a Newfoundland, and I decided that's what I wanted, but it was about 10 years later before I got my first Newfie. You mentioned more than once liking big dogs. Is it easy to say what a great big dog brings to the table that a small dog may not bring? I think it's their personality. They're, to me, they're more real. A little dog has an attitude. I, I always call it the Napoleon complex. And a big dog, it's like, here I am, take it or leave it. And that's kind of the way I like it. You were what age when, when you first had a Newfoundland? I was... 52. And when you committed to a Newfoundland, guessing that you knew the Newfoundland was a working dog? I knew a little bit about it. When I got the puppy, I bought, purchased the book, Judy Adler's The Newfoundland and You. And I started reading about the history and what all they could do, and it fascinated me. You know, they were a multi-purpose dog. They didn't just do water, they did draft, you know, and read the history of the dog. And that's kind of when I decided I kind of like to try some of that. I've never trained a dog before. I took the puppy, the Newfoundland puppy, to a pet class because I knew he would outweigh me and I wanted a well-behaved dog. So at this pet class, he was so, he, he picked up on things so, so quickly that it's like, well, let's try this. So we tried the water, we tried the draft, and then I decided I wanted to do obedience and do rally. And he just picked everything up. It was, it was not a whole lot of work to work with him. So that's kind of how the bug bit me as far as working. I went out and introduced myself to a couple people in the club that I knew did water work and met up with a gal and we started doing water work together and um, later on, the, well it was the following year, that's when I met Cindy and we started doing water work together. So that group, we've been working together since 2003-2004. So nearly in its 20th year of working with your teammates to, to the common goal of water work? Yep. Yep, and then um, we do, we get together for drafting, but drafting doesn't take a village like water work does. You know, you, you, you need that group of people to do that type of work. I think it's very important. It's sometimes said that water work does take a village. Definitely. Say more about that. Why, why is that? Well, there's some things you can do on your own, you know, and I do a lot of land work with my dogs. Um, you can teach them to take hold and retrieve. You can teach them, you can use the articles in your backyard and teach them to, 
to go out and get it and to bring it back to you. Um, there's, there's a few other things you can do on your own. But when it comes to the water and they need to rescue somebody, you need somebody out there drowning for you. Um, you need a boat. You need somebody to row the boat. One of the exercises they have to pick the person that's drowning out of a group of three. So you need three people out there and one that's willing to call help, help, help. And not everybody's comfortable doing that. So it takes a special group of people to do something like that. I think for the newbies, they were bred to do water rescue. And so you see, at least for me, my experience with my dogs, I saw more of a drive to want to do that. And that enthusiasm is very contagious. You know, when you see your dog leaping into the water and rushing out to get a person or an article, it's kind of contagious. So it's just, I think it's a fun thing to do with your dogs, especially if they're having fun doing it. How does it impact the way you bond with the dog? Oh boy, um, a lot. Again, it's that enthusiasm to see, to see the drive, to see the, the joy. It brings joy to, to me. You could have a bad day and go to the lake with your dog and you can forget all, it, it's so easy to forget about everything that made that day bad and change everything around. The first time I met you was in 2012 and okay. you had come to the Pennsylvania test and you were exhibiting at the senior level, uh, possibly with the Henry dog. Yep. You were the first handler that looked to me like you knew what you wanted to say to the dog. It was a real economy of motion, words, rarely use your directions very very deliberate in particular since i was new to understanding what i was looking at i was watching the way you would set up the article retrieve and the way you would mark the object and use your dominant arm to point to the object to the dog you were the first person that alerted me that there was art in handling the dog. Do you, do you agree that you did develop an art and a form of communication that is different from other handlers? Yes. So much of what I learned, I learned from suggestions from other people. The articles, the setup for it. My very first test, you know, it was like, go get it. And the judge came up to me afterwards and said, do you know what marking is? And of course, I had no idea what marking was. And he said, well, talk to me after the test and, and we'll, we'll, have a, we'll have a talk. And so he did. He, he, he talked to me about marking for somebody to take the time to sit down and teach me something like that. It was something that I could build on. And I'd have to say to this day, anything that I do, it's been advice or watching other people, you know, and picking and choosing what you want to use. You have to be one with your dog. If you can kind of get a sense of what they're seeing, what they're feeling, it kind of helps with what you want to do. In the X exercise, I know that when I send my dog, when my dog finally gets in the water, which on a good day they get in the water, I get my feet out of the water. I get everything part of me out of the water. I'm up on the boat. And you, you've got a task to do. You need to get out. Just little tiny things like that because you learn, you know, if you're still in the water, at least for my dogs, if I'm still in the water, that's an invitation that we're going to do something together in the water. Where if I draw myself out of the water and I'm back up on the boat, you have a task to do. So I've been told I'm 
soft with the dogs, but I find that works. Is there any particular dog of those you trained? Is there any particular dog you remember well, better than others? Henry. And why Henry? He was perfect. <laughs> I've called him my perfect boy. I, he taught me a lot. He was just very powerful. He was a powerful swimmer. He was a beautiful jumper. I felt very connected with him. I feel that way with Spencer. I felt that way with Benson, but I was so new at this that I know that there was things that he tried to tell me that I didn't see just because I was still very much a very new beginning trainer. So each dog has taught me something in that regard. Truman, I guess with him, it's nothing came easy with him. You know, with Henry, everything came easy. He picked it right up. Truman made me work for every little thing that he did. He made me a better trainer because of it. What in particular did Truman resist doing? Jumping, jumping off the back of the boat. And we tried all sorts of things with him. And finally, what worked, and there again, is knowing your dog, he was afraid. He was afraid of the deep water. If our boat was in shallow water, he would jump He would jump right in. So what we did is we put a life jacket on him so he wouldn't go under. We trained early in the morning, so I would withhold his breakfast and bring it along, and I'd put it in a bowl, and I'd get out in the water. He'd be on the back of the boat, and I'd say, do you want your breakfast? Do you want your breakfast? And he would jump. And I get a big wad of it out of the bowl and feed it to him just to make it something. This can be fun. This can be good. And that kind of helped a little bit. But it wasn't a consistent jumper. Every test we went to, it was kind of like, okay, is he going to jump? Is he going to jump? So, and when he finally did, it's like, okay, we're not going to do this again. We're done. You, 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 you did it. You know, you got your title. We got your VN. You don't have to do this anymore. I will never forget photographing Truman jump at the Great Life Test. <laughs> With the expression the on my face. And, and your response. I was shocked. It was like, oh my God, he jumped. Now we didn't pass that exercise, but he jumped. And that was, that was the most important thing. I asked him to jump and he did. What, what advice would you have for people who have lost bets and are apprehensive to develop another deep attachment. Every dog is different. And probably the highest compliment you can pay to the dog that you lost is to get another one because it proves that that dog did its job. It wormed its way into your heart and I'd like to vision when you get a puppy that there's a big celebration up in heaven. Yay, look at this. We, you did a good job. You did such a good job. They want to do this again. It's, it's, it hurts. It hurts really, really bad. But the joy you get from that, I think, supersedes that sorrow. It's amazing that we're willing to do it again, but I think it's worth it. I think it's really worth it.